What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game, Kenny For Real, whatever you want to call it. Today we had a full slate of games, and I watched a lot of the games, and there's not one thing I can really take away as far as, like, usually there's a team or a player I want to talk about extensively at the top of the show. That's the thumbnail. That's the title. Bada boom, bada bam. We get out there with the video. And I know a lot of y'all don't care about that type of stuff, but as we try to continue to build this, this channel, the title and the thumbnail are super important. So hopefully with me rambling about some of the games, we'll, we'll really break down what the title of this video is. Leave a like, subscribe. Let's get into the games for today. I'm just going to go in the order that I see it. And the first game I see on the top of here. It's actually a postponed game, Spurs versus Pelicans. Still weird to have games postponed like this, man. And this was like a late scratch postponed. But anyway, let's get to the actual basketball being played. The 76ers lost to the Pistons. I'm going to say it. A loss like this is inexcusable. It does make the Joel Embiid MVP case a little bit stronger that the team is 0-4 without him in the lineup. And I think two of those losses came to the Detroit Pistons. And the Detroit Pistons are the worst team in basketball. Now, I know the Pistons are better than probably what their record says, but record-wise, they are still the worst team in basketball. And the 76ers lose. I Listen, no Joel Embiid, of course, he's their MVP candidate, but there's still enough on this roster to be able to beat the Detroit Pistons. And you want to know what? We got to talk about Ben Simmons. The last episode, we talked about how two games ago, I think he had 12 points in the fourth quarter. He was amazing. And then the, the game after that, he dropped 20. We're like, okay, Ben Simmons is ramping it up and trying to get back to that all-NBA level. A game like this is what, what kills me about Ben Simmons. Y'all know I'm a fan of Ben Simmons. To have a guy of his size to be able to control the offense, play an elite, and I mean elite-level defense is very special. But it's some of the other things that bother me about Ben Simmons' play, and today it was showcased to the fullest extent. When Joel Embiid is not in the lineup, that is like 20-plus shots to be distributed to the rest of the team and you would hope your uh, your other all NBA player would take over some of those shots but Ben Simmons doesn't do that like my guy Pierre who's a co-host of the podcast that I host he has this this shirt and there's this hashtag he's been using for years this hashtag build with Ben which is like if if he was the general manager of the 76ers and he had to pick whether or not he wanted to build his team around Ben Simmons or build his team around Joel Embiid, he would pick Ben Simmons. And games like this make it super, super hard. Now, I understand without Joel Embiid, the roster is not perfectly constructed for a Ben Simmons team. But let's be honest. No player in NBA history really has a team that is perfectly constructed to their talents. So a game like this, when you have an All-NBA player with your MVP candidate being out, you're the number two option, but today you should be number one. And Ben Simmons doesn't do those type of things enough. We know he could. Bro, there's no reason. There's nobody on the Detroit Pistons that I believe would be able to stop Ben Simmons if he wanted to burrow his way to the basket. Like, like everybody be saying, like, he has the ability to be Giannis going to the rim. Sure, we can see that, what, two, three times a game? But in order for him to be like Giannis, in order for him to be like LeBron going to the rim, those dudes do it 20 times a game. And Ben Simmons doesn't do those type of things. You would want Ben Simmons to take over these type of games, you know. Instead of those 20 shots going to Ben, a lot of them went to Tobias, and he had a good game today, don't get me wrong. You know, Tony Bradley coming off the bench got a lot of those shots. Um, Tyrese Maxey ain't never afraid to shoot the shot, and that's why I like him a lot. A lot of shots went to the other guys instead of Ben Simmons. A big win for the Detroit Pistons in a game where uh, Jeremy Grant, Wayne Ellington, and DeLon Wright felt unstoppable. Um, so the 76 defense wasn't great either today. But again, I don't want to solely say like this loss is on Ben Simmons because it's far from the truth but I, I hope people at home understand what I'm trying to say we're like you have another all-star caliber player like teams with two all-stars think about them if all-star one is out I can usually expect all-star two to play better maybe not play better but to try to take over that load and they and Ben Simmons doesn't do that like if, if Giannis is sitting out Chris Middleton's probably getting 10 more shots and vice versa. That's just the way it is. But it, it doesn't really work like that for the 76ers. I don't really know. And that kind of scares me as far as like 76 as a contender because the number two option doesn't really feel like the number two option. I guess technically he's not the – how can you be an all-NBA player but not the number two option? Because realistically, Tobias Harris is the number two option offensively. It's a very, very weird situation to Philly. I still do like the team a lot. And Joel Embiid as an MVP candidate. I mean, again, they got stronger with this one. Next game is the Raptors versus the Pacers. Pacers can't catch a break with uh, Sabonis going out with the knee-knocking injury. And I know I wanted to talk about this game from yesterday because they had the good old back-to-back -back scenarios here in the game where OG Ananobi had 30. Um, so they clamped up Sabonis. Great defensive plays from Chris Boucher and all of that. And the Toronto Raptors were starting to get back on point. They were 5-1 and one in their last six before tonight, which makes them 5-2 and two in their last seven, which is not bad. Like, 
Toronto Raptors are going to be a playoff team. I will be super, super surprised if they're not one of the top eight teams in the NBA. I'm not even, I'm not even talking about playing. They should be top eight, um, and they're slowly getting back to that. And Pascal still hasn't played in the last couple. But good to see OG Ananobi doing OG Ananobi type things. I mean, the way he has progressed, and I'm going to say the same thing about Jalen Brown when we talk about the Celtics a little bit later. The way he has progressed every single year has been incredible. Now, this game, he wasn't necessarily great, but the 30-point game and the win was amazing. Um, but the game that I, the person I want to talk about for the Indiana Pacers tonight, of course, Malcolm Brock, shout out to Prez for having a bounce back game because yesterday he wasn't good at all. But I mean, a 36 9 and 7 game is ridiculous. But I want to talk about Miles Turner. Man, if Miles Turner ain't turning into the perfect, prototypical, whatever you need, coach, I got you, player. <laughs> Sabonis so goes out with the injury. And instead of Miles Turner sitting at the three point line, he was down low grubbing. That's one of the biggest problems with the Toronto Raptors. They don't have uh, adequate defensive centers. But, man, Miles Turner was out there today. It was so weird to see because I would never have imagined a game where Miles Turner put up a 20-10 and 10 and didn't attempt a three-point shot. He was getting to the basket. He was getting fouled, and he was doing Miles Turner type. Th- I mean, well, this is not even Miles Turner type things. These is, this is out of character. But like I said, whatever you need, coach, I got you, is what it feels like he um, he brings to the table. And that's great. It's cool to see Jeremy Lamb back on the court. And in these few games he has been here, he's been really, really good. And that's very promising for him coming back from such a big injury. The next game. We had uh, Gordon Hayward have another big game, but instead it was spoiled by Nick Vucevic. Gordon Hayward had the, what, 40-point plus a game winner a couple nights ago against the Magic, but the Magic bounced back, getting him at 8-10. and 10. Vucevic has been so, so good this season. He is shooting a ridiculous clip from the three-point line this year. I, I've talked to some Orlando Magic fans face-to-face, well, not face-to-face because, you know, social distancing, but talked to some Orlando Magic fans, and a lot of them want to, you know, um, what is a fade for Cade is what I've been seeing a lot. Vucevic won't allow that to happen, bro. He's been too good. And to see Cole Anthony come out and have his best scoring night as an NBA player is great. But the, I don't know how much love Vucevic will get throughout the course of the season, but he deserves a, a, a ton of love today, especially in a game where, like, Aaron Gordon wasn't necessarily good as far as scoring the ball goes. That man is incredible, bro. I don't know what he's shooting from the three-point line, but I tell you, whenever he's taking a shot, I'm assuming it's going in because teams just allow him to shoot it. And maybe one day people will start closing out on him, but until they do, he's going to knock down a high percentage of it. Oh, let's talk about the Nets. Today, a game like this against the Heat again, the Heat are beat up. Um, still missing Jimmy, still missing Tyler Hero, still missing Avery Bradley. They're beat up. But a game like tonight is the reason why the Brooklyn Nets are super, super scared. First of all, they play defense for the first time as a core, which is amazing. Again, Miami Heat out with a lot of stuff, but they play defense as, as a team. And then in a game where Kevin Durant struggled, in a game where Kyrie Irving struggled, they still had a third star to take over the game. That's what makes them scary. James Harden didn't do much as far as, like, scoring the ball in the first three quarters, but when they needed him the most, he took it over. That's what makes them scary. And then this is the first game where they play really good defense. I don't think they're going to play defense like this all season, but if they could get moments of this defense and then (laughs) – it's tough. Shout out to Bam again for another good game. The Dragon was lethal from the three-point line. But, man, the Brooklyn Nets look look scary today because the defense was great. And then when their two stars were struggling, number three was like – I got us. Or I guess number 13 was like, I got us. So it's great. Uh, the King took over the fourth quarter in Cleveland. LeBron has a step. Bro, I don't know how many people actually unironically use Wash King. You know what I'm saying? LeBron be writing it on the back of his sneakers and stuff. I don't know if I've ever heard someone actually call LeBron Wash. And if they did, they're just a hater. But LeBron has taken this Wash King thing and ran with it and using it as motivation. I mean, hey, if somebody talks negative about me, I'm probably going to use it as motivation as well. But he'd be signing on the back of his shoes, and today he was wearing a dope pair of kicks, and he put up 46 at home. Like, at his home. Such a great – and, like, takeover mode, too. Listen, the Cleveland Cavaliers are a good team. They showcased that again tonight. But it was nothing they could have did on, on LeBron. They were missing Larry Nance, who probably got a lot of LeBron defensive minutes. But there was nothing they could do about him. When I knew it was over with when he took a turnaround fading three-point shot in the corner. Well, I think it was a, a, a long two in the corner, and it just went in. It's like, oh, it's one of those King James GOAT moments. So you, if you're a Cleveland Cavaliers fan, you can't even be mad. 
You know what I'm saying? You're just going to have takeovers from LeBron like that a couple times a year. And if you didn't watch this game, please go back and watch this game. Even if it's just the highlights, LeBron was lethal. 20-something points in the fourth quarter alone. And I think Steph Curry had a great fourth quarter too. But, man, the king, the king, the king. Next game, we have the Nuggets winning against the Mavericks. Me and my boys are talking about this. The Nuggets, I feel like they are they always end up in these super, super close games. Have they had a single blowout this year? It doesn't feel like it. But this is a very good game for Michael Porter Jr., who's slowly ramping himself back into game shape after the um, the health protocol stuff. And he ended up having the best game of the season for him. And then man, Michael Green could not have been a better signing for them, for him to play a lot of the, I guess, like backup uh, small ball center when Yoke is, is not on the court. Paul Millsap. Will Barr didn't have good games, but those bench replacements really did. And I do expect to see Michael Porter Jr. back in the star lineup eventually once his conditioning is good. But, man, Jokic, again, another great MVP-type performance. And then Michael Porter Jr. We're not going to talk about the stuff Jamal Murray did. Um, it did look intentional. I don't care what a Denver Nugget fan tells me. That looked very, very intentional. And there's no place for that in any place, bro. That That's like rule one of being a guy is not hit another guy there. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're really trying to hurt them. Unless you're really trying to hurt them. And then for Luka to do everything he did today, this is one of those losses that hurt. And I don't want to judge the, the Dallas Mavericks because they're still not completely healthy. But but Porzingis was really bad today. He was. And I'm going to count it as a pass because he's still working his way up. He was, he was terrible today. I don't care that he scored 16. He was terrible today. Turnovers, his fouls, his defense, all of that was terrible, especially in that fourth quarter. Um, and he is your second best player. You need him to be better than that. Next, we have the, the Celtics beating up on the Chicago Bulls. Typical day. You know, typical day is Bulls fandom where your team can't protect the ball and you don't have a point guard. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what happened. Because throughout the first couple games of the season, first 10 or so games, Kobe White was looking really good. And the last five or so, he has not. Um, Jalen Brown still continues to be one of my favorite young players in the league. I thought eventually he would slow down, but 16 games in the season? Nope. Did, did he miss a shot this game? Didn't feel like it. Shout out to the Celtics. Uh, Jason Tatum being back on the floor is great after basically him missing basically like a month of basketball, which I don't feel like that. But I can't wait to see them, you know, back on national TV and playing against contenders. But now they have pretty much their full strength, except for Peyton Pritchard, who they could have used today. I mean, I know they won eventually, but Jeff Teague sucks, and Peyton Pritchard is better than him as a rookie. Uh, the Warriors get a win over the Timberwolves, where Steph Curry took over that fourth quarter doing Steph Curry type things. If you weren't watching Steph, you're missing out on greatness. I don't know how many more years we have of Steph Curry being one of the better players in the league, but I am not taking this for granted. There were there were great players in the past that I kind of took for granted as far as, like, I wasn't watching them every single day. I miss Tim Duncan, y'all. But when Tim Duncan was still great, I wasn't really tuning in. I missed out on, like, the last couple years of Tim Duncan. I won't let that happen again. Whether it be LeBron, whether it be Kevin Durant, whether it be James Harden, Steph Curry, these older guys in their 30s, I'm going to watch every single game to to make sure I don't miss another moment of greatness because I don't be like, man, I missed that. You know what I'm saying? And this was one of those games. And the Shea Gillis Alexander. And, oh, I'm sorry. It, this wasn't even a Shea game. This is a Mike Muscala game. <laughs> it was a Mike Muscala game because he turned into dirt. The man hit a, a shot in the corner, one-legged spin move. Mike Muscala, a good win for the Thunder who just – won't go down as a tanking team. They just never will. They just never will. Good good game for them. Uh, I think that's my whole Slater games, man. If you enjoyed it, leave it a like. I, I'll see y'all very soon. I don't know what the Slater games look like tomorrow, but if it ain't tomorrow, it'll be the day after because y'all know I, I can't go long without talking about basketball, baby. So I'll see y'all in a little bit. Peace.